So this week, we're actually looking at top businesses across the sector. So what I've done is we've got a tool on maybe where you can literally look at, um, so it might be that you're a baker and you don't know what your direct competitor might be. So you might just want to look at bakers as a sector. So I'm going to show you guys how to actually do that. And then that's literally what I've done. So to find the case studies for today, I've gone into the maybe platform, I've looked at sectors and I've looked at for that specific week, the top performing um, ones in the sector. So let's have a little look. So we're going to start with looking at in the style and looking at tag taggable content. So that's a big um, fashion brand. We're going to look at um, how they've created taggable content and they came up top trumps in the um, fashion se sector. Then we've got um, Pollock Williamson. So they're actually a local butcher that are based up in my neck of the woods, up in Scotland, um, or where, where I'm from, obviously not where I am right now. Um, and they are getting amazing engagement for being more human, um, I guess, and showing the human side of their business. And then we're looking at good old Greg's um, and how they got involved in the Super Bowl. And then we're looking at Visit York and Celebrating Place. And then lastly, what we are actually going to do is, is give you guys some ideas on how you can come up with campaigns based on the national content calendars as well. So I'm going to start by actually going a bit off piste and showing you guys where I actually get all this information from. So what we really focus on is how to pri you prioritize your channels and your content by learning from your competitors, by learning from your sector, by understanding what's going on in your market in order to make sure that I guess, you know, that you you're doing the right things. So this is literally it. So when you go on to um, the Maybe platform, um, normally what you would find is you have, um, you know, that you've got various areas that you can focus on so you've got your dashboard where you can directly compare um any business to yourself where and um, you know we, we show this week in week out where you can learn you know that what's content's working for the say the competitor versus you etc i wanted to show you how to do it in, con in content calendar because it's actually quite a nifty little tool um, and this is quite literally how i found all of this stuff for you guys today so um in content calendar um so this is the maybe content calendar so you see all of our um stuff that's all scheduled in for the week and then what i've done so normally you would click in here and it would be add more so this would be you know all the ones that we've kind of got plugged into the system if you like so all of the maybe supermarkets or it might be shopping centers things like that and what i want to do is i want to actually go in here and look at a sector so if i'm maybe obviously we are tech but if I am, I don't know, a shopping centre, I might want to look at other shopping centres. I might want to, but I might not have ever even heard of Abbey Gate or I might not have heard of some of these ones. So I want to just look at random ones um, to get a bit of a picture as to what the sector is doing. So what I do is I go into content calendar and I go into add more in here. So I can search for a business. So I can literally put in, you know, so if I'm a baker or a shopping centre or anything like that, I can search for a specific business. But sometimes you just want a bit of inspiration from the sector. And here they all are loads of them so you've got your destination management organization so that would be you know like your it might be your visit york so you know we're focusing on them today it might be i don't know a destination lincolnshire anything like that you've then just got your top form businesses across any sector which is how i found all of these case studies that we're going to go through today you've got your top um retailers and um, you've got your top banks and financials top bakers so basically anything that you're looking for should be in here and we are coming up with everything from the conversations which basically literally shows you all of the content that they're producing um, and it shows you it in comparison to your own um, and then you can also then look at um, all of um, you know that which channels they're using what's working for them but essentially I just want to show you guys where this was because again all of this stuff we're coming up with every week every month we're coming up with new tech and um, to and new plugins new things to add into the system so the more that I guess we can do to help you guys the better you guys are going to get social the more the platform works so um this basically is where we find all this amazing content so that's this let's get cracking so as we know 79.1 percent of consumers in the uk spend over an hour on social media every day and basically hardly any of the UK businesses, only 19% of businesses are actually active on a daily basis. So what we want to do is bridge that gap. What we want to do is help you guys use this platform to get more social, to get stronger at social media um, and ensure that you guys are, um, I guess, connecting. And what we do is a lot of the time we help connect people, places and businesses, connect them all together through social. And we do this 
through this. So we help you compare um, your social media performance with any other business, which is how I just showed you there, or you can do it on your dashboard. Um, we give you guys all the social media tools and insight you need to use it effectively. And then of course, we've got tons of training. So that's why every week I always come on here a little bit croaky because I've done, I usually recorded another 10 videos or so um, for you guys, um, which is all about, I guess, taking small independent businesses or some national retailers and breaking down what why they've done a thing well, whether it's reels or whether it's, I don't know, Facebook ads or something like that. So we're going to get cracking with this. So um, in this style, so um, this is, they are all about being inclusive. So for those of you who don't know what in the style is, so this came up, so I literally put in, so top businesses, this came up in the fashion sector, okay? So that was literally it that's the only parameters they need to be in is they need to be engaged. So they need to top engagement, but then they also need to have, um, they need to be in the fashion sector in order to qualify, I guess. And as you can see from the rest of their kind of posts, they do a bit of a mix. They are all about inclusivity. They're all about um, having fashion for every body shape, style, size, um, you know, background, um, you know, like basic body composition, literally everything, you know, they, they focus on everybody, you know, everybody should have something that fits them and looks, makes them look good, makes them feel sexy, makes them feel, um, you know, empowered. That's what they're all about. Um, and so they can afford to be quite edgy with their content because I guess that's their ethos is all about, you know, like just, you know, loving your body and embracing who you are and that kind of thing. And as you can see, they do a bit of a mix here. So they always have their fashion content, which is usually done in a kind of selfie style mode. They do a lot of collaborations and things, but they break up their content with this kind of thing. So they break it up by doing either a meme or they break it up by basically looking like they've done a Facebook, I'm sorry, an Instagram post. They brand it up within the style. Um, and it's usually something that I call it hitting you in the funnies or hitting you in the feels. So let's have a look at this one that they did. So this was their top post their top most engaged post of the last week when I looked at this and built up the content and I found it through the sectors so here it is you know again they've just kind of randomly generated this so did anyone else's relationships with their siblings randomly become normal after trying to kill one another growing up now I've got a brother I can 100% identify with this don't know if anyone on the call has any siblings but I think most people at some point has felt like that with their sibling in one way, shape or form. If you haven't, you've, I'm sure you've witnessed it or it might be a childhood friend. So most people can in some way relate to this. There might be, but th this is designed to kind of hit you in the funnies, if you like, which is basically, you know, me, the top, my way of saying, you know, that, um, I guess, you know, the creating that humor. Um, but it's about tagability. They've created this because they want me to go, oh, brother, that's so you, you know, my brother's called Ross, um, that's so you, um, or it might be to tag in my best and go, oh my God, remember you and your sister growing up, we used to like, you know, like hate each other, you know, like the little things like that. So that is what they want you to do. They want you to tag, tag someone in by doing this. And to do that, you either hit someone in the funny, so AKA it's funny, it's, you know, it's bang on point, it, you know, makes you think, um, oh my God, you know, there's like 10 friends that I could um, tag in or they hit you in the feels. So it's something that evokes some kind of emotional response, whether it's sadness, whether it's anger, whether it's upset, whether it's rage, whether it's um, excitement, something. This kind of does a bit of both because this kind of provokes nostalgia and makes you think about times in your life, which I think most people would look on rather fondly, but you never know, they might do the opposite. Um, but here it says, anyone else tag in your sibling. And then you can see everyone's done this, you know, took us long enough. Um, that's clearly a brother and sister. Um, I'm tagging in, I I'm assuming a couple of sisters and survived the verbal abuse, healthy sibling wars, only took 25 years. Um, love the relationship we have now. We matured when Ralph was born. Everyone has gone absolutely for it. And this post has had 35,908 engagements. That is massive for basically someone going, did you hate your brother going up or did you hate your sister? Like that's all this is. So this is what I mean. Social media can be so, so simple. So this, bear in mind that I've, I've put in fashion sector, okay? The fashion sector is massive. We've got huge, huge, huge brands doing all these, you know, incredible things, doing all these, you know, really expensive reels. They're, you know, like creating these multi-million pound adverts. And this is what came up as top of the fashion sector. So this is why it's important to look at those sectors and look at the top performing businesses within those sectors, because trust me when I say you will get inspiration from this. If they can do this, you can do it. You go onto Canva and you literally just 
there, there's ones that are already pre-built for you or you can take something like this the other thing you can do is you can take something like this and you can reshade it yourself just reshade it you tag in in the style it's absolutely fine um and it doesn't matter whether you're a cafe whether you're you know a baker whether you are a hairdresser it doesn't really matter the point is is that this appeals to masses which is kind of the idea the other interesting thing about it is is that in the style generally you know they focus a lot on obviously female fashion people have tagged in loads of brothers um so again that's opening themselves up to a nice new audience isn't it so that's what this is all about it is about taggability it is about doing something just fun and um, it is about being where your customers are and it's understanding that your customers do like a bit of tongue in cheek so here is another classic one of this this is twenty five thousand. Um, my mum once said, you know, you have a big heart when you feel bad for doing what's best for you. And I think it's important that everyone hears this. So tag someone who needs to hear this. Now that is going to hit them in the feels, not the funnies. So we've got funnies, feels. So when you're thinking about content, if you really want to create content that engages with people, sometimes it can be as generic as this. Super, super generic, super general, some kind of, I don't know, positivity quote, something about, you know, being strong if you want to get them in the feels. And then it's something that, you know, just is hilarious, something about, I don't know, messy bedroom or whatever it might be, if it's hit them in the funnies or hit them in somewhere where they would want to tag people. So look, people have gotten really involved in this. Look, this is for you. So this is people that are going through a, a dark time, a tough time. You need to hear this right now. So simple. So sometimes we overcomplicate content. And I just wanted to show you that this is one that, you know, this is a huge brand and one that needs to show off their fashion and look where they're getting their most engagement is actually in stuff like this. So anybody could um, benefit from something like this. So I just wanted to show you that, you know, that that is literally how it's done. Totally different business, a butchers. So I love this. Now, again, I found these guys by doing what I showed you in the beginning, and I'll show you again, is by going onto the maybe platform, I clicked engage, and then I wanted to compare myself to a top performing business. So you either choose top performing businesses across any sector, or you can choose in a sector. So I wanted to look at butcher. So pretend that I'm a butcher in, I don't know, Aylesbury, that's where I am. Um, I have decided I want to look and see why these guys are getting so much engagement. They're not a direct competitor of mine because I'm in Buckinghamshire and they're up in Scotland. But what can I learn from them? That is the point in doing this. So let's have a little look. So this was on their Facebook page. And as I said, they came up as top performing for butchers. And I just love it because it, again, it's so simple. It's so simple. So this is a picture of the two team members that, oh, they just look so happy and just good, happy to be there. And then you've got the branding in the background. So Paulette Williamson Family Butchers, award-winning traditional recipes, retail and trays. They've got a great picture of the shop window. It really shows their branding, you know, exactly who they are. They don't need to go and brand it up because guess what? It's all right there. They've even then got their products there as well. And then it's, the, it's all about the caption. So say hello to our friendly butchers, Clark and Gary. Our counters are fully stocked here at Air High Street for another busy day. We look forward to seeing you. And then they've put um, the actual pens, they've put the locations as to where you can find, if you're looking for a local butcher, where you can find them and they've put the phone numbers as well. It is simple, it's to the point. And look at the engagement it got. It got three, this is a, a family, this is a family run independent butchers, right? And it got 347 engagements. It got 60 comments, 17 shares. That is huge for quite literally a post going, here's the guys that work behind the counter and this is where we are, come on down. And that's because they have recognized that people buy from people and particularly when it comes to this kind of product, I guess, you know, you have to really trust someone. You have to really trust that it's going to come from a good, reputable source. A lot of people care an awful lot about that these days in particular. And so you want to know that it's, I don't know, you're supporting a local business and people buy from people, which Kate became a lot more evident during um, COVID. So by showing the people behind the counter in this particular business, they are going, come on down. This is the experience you're going to get say hello to good old Clark, say hello to good old Gary. You know, it just it just feels like, you know, I'm being introduced to people that I would be chatting to, you know, behind the counter and getting, you know, like, I don't know, my Sunday roast or whoever from. So 
And then by adding in, I guess, all of the areas that they're based in, it means that they're you're more likely to maybe tag in like a friend that lives in, I don't know, you know, Kilmarnock as opposed to Ayr. Now, all these places just, you know, are like all around um, Ayrshire in Scotland, if you don't know it. Um, but I really, really like it. And in comparison to like, I guess, you know, some of their other posts here, um, you know, they've got a vacancy. That's great. And that got nine engagements, you know, 13 shares. That's still that's still really good. Their Valentine's one. So if you look at all these engagements, you can see what I mean. The sheer difference in engagement that this got because they showed the people behind the business, they introduced them, they told us, look, so this is what I mean. The power of social media is incredible. So make sure that you're learning from not only, I guess, businesses in your sector, but you can learn from businesses that aren't in your sector. Why couldn't you do this? As I don't know, you know, as I said, I'm based in Buckinghamshire, Buckinghamshire Council could literally do this on their page and go, let's introduce, I don't know, the the team that do X, or it could be the local shopping centre. Let's get the centre manager walking around, um, walking around the shopping centre and talking to members of the public about X, Y, and Z, or let's introduce the security guard who works three shifts a week and he helps protect us doing X, Y, and Z. Do you see what I'm saying? It is simple, effective social media, and they are an independent family-run business, and they've come top of all the butchers, all of them. So they're doing something right. So massive well done to these guys. And again, what can you learn from this? Put your put your team to the forefront, get them out, show off your shop window, because guess what? I don't always walk past your shop window. I need to see your shop window on social media to go, oh, that's what that one is. I need to get a trip down. And I actually wanted to show you the content calendar. So basically what I just showed you earlier on um, was um, content calendar. So basically you can see all of your scheduled content. But you can compare yourself, as I said, to any other competitor. And I chose Pollock Williamson because actually they've got pretty engaged um, social media. So here you can see that they tend to focus on Facebook, which is fine. They know their channel. They know what works because people are, again, Facebook's a great place for recommendations, for tagging in. You know, I, I know I'm on loads of like um, community groups where they're always people are always asking for, you know, does anyone know a good butcher that I can get? I don't know, a, um, a really good bit of beef from, from a Sunday roast right through to does anyone know any local nannies and childminders? You know, everybody goes on these groups to tag in things. And you tend to get that much more with Facebook and less so with the likes of Instagram. Instagram is that visual and Facebook is much more where people go on for recommendations and want to chat and communicate. So they obviously understand that. And then you can see they do like to show off, you know, like their product. And then you've said um, they, they can get our free home delivery. So they do they do a mix of content. But as you can see, they also like to. So that's their um, Mount Oliphant um, Crescent team. So that's, again, just the team. And that will have gotten much more engagement than the other ones. So, yeah, basically, if I was them, I would be looking at my maybe dashboard and going, oh, that's what's working. I need to keep doing more of this. This is an interesting one. So I also looked at top businesses and then I looked at bakers because I thought, why not? Why not have a look at what the, what the baking industry is doing at the moment? So good old Greg's came up. And I want to have a look at it because this is an interesting one. So we talk all the time about using national content or a national event or an international event and piggybacking your content off the back of it. So I'm just going to stop this for a second. So Greg's, as you can see, they tend to do quite, you know, they do like little funny things like that. Steak and cheese roll. Honestly, people like responded back. They like to just show off their product. They've got their big Ben in the background. Everything with Greg's is pretty chilled out, really tongue in cheek and usually like, you know, quite funny and kind of, you know, like very lighthearted, if you like. Um, and with this, what they've chosen to do is to do uh, um, is to do a uh, sort of piggybacking off the back of the Super Bowl party. So let's have a look at it. All right, so why is this interesting? 
So they have basically taken the mickey out of themselves and us Brits because people like, you know, it, the world wide were going on about the Super Bowl. It was a huge international event. Everyone was talking about it. Everyone was talking about Rihanna. Everyone was talking about um, the, the game itself. Everyone was talking about everything. You know, it was huge and it is every year. But obviously much bigger in America. In the UK, quite a lot of British brands tried to get behind it. And what I quite like about this one, and the reason why this became, you know, this was top of the bakers, if you like. Now, bear in mind that there's some huge baking companies um, all around the UK. And so they were, you know, Greg's might be a big one, but in, in terms of content, why would this be more interesting? So how to throw a British Super Bowl party? They've said only order Greg's and then have no idea what's going on or what sport it is. So basically you're using it as an excuse to, you know, have a bit of a joke and have a bit of a laugh and, you know, get your mates round and eat loads of stuff, eat loads of stodge um, and maybe have a few drinks, that kind of thing. Basically you have a party, but you don't really care or know why. So that's that kind of British thing of us going, yeah, we don't really understand the sport and our sport's more football or our sport's more tennis or things like that. So the idea is it's tongue in cheek. It is taking the mickey a little bit. And that's all they're doing. They're just, they're taking a national piece of content, an international piece of content with a hashtag. And then they are chucking the Greg's brand at it. Now, interestingly, so this got two and a half thousand likes and quite a lot of engagement, but it got quite a lot of negative engagement. But guess what? Social media, it doesn't really matter because this got loads of engagement. It got loads of new people to their feed. It got people who were engaged in their feed engaged and commenting on it, whether they liked it or not. It doesn't really matter. They're still showing off their products. They're still, you know, engaging. And that's what you want with social media. So this is interesting. What British person is watching the Super Bowl? Last year's four million Brits. It's popular. Me. So you can see it got people talking. Now, Instagram's a funny one. It's really hard to have a conversation on Instagram. It's just not the easiest one. But this one was people going, eh, actually, I'm staying up and watching the Super Bowl. So, you know, yeah, keep your opinion to yourself kind of thing. So it's controversial, interesting, unfollowed. Cheers, Greg's crying. Step one, don't. A bit watching the Super Bowl. Oh, is this that weird football actually more like rugby thing that happens in between Rihanna's concert sets? And then there's people moaning that um, why don't they open up franchises in the US so that Brits who live in the US can escape the, the Gregless hell that we live in? Is that funny sports thing they're doing during the Rihanna concert? How are people getting turned up over a Greg's post? It's just hilarious. It's really, really, really funny. So I absolutely love it because they haven't really cared they're not really trying to sell Greg's they're not really trying you know like you know if you buy a Greg's you buy a Greg's they're not trying to sell any of this stuff at the end of the day what they're trying to do is to create a create content around something that's big that's engaging and not really caring about what the consequences of the post are so you can see here it's I mean you know it's chucking some donuts and a sausage roll and sticking an American flag in it you know they haven't gone like all out with doing some big campaign but they know it's controversial. They know everyone's got an opinion and people love giving their opinions on social media. So when we talk about doing the national campaigns in a wee minute um, and I'm giving you guys some ideas, think about a Greg's. Think about the fact that actually it could just be that people are going, no, actually, you know, it's it's Marmite. Do you, you know, are you a Marmite lover? Do you hate it? It's that kind of situation. People love doing that on social media. So even if people don't love the idea, the point is, is that they're talking about it and they're talking about you and your front of mind. So again, and it's not controversial enough for it to be a thing that people hate because of it, you know, and that's that's where the, the difference is. So yeah, I really liked that. And this one, completely different. So again, I'm looking at top sectors and this was, I guess, more of the destination management organisations. So this was Visit York. And funny enough, they're talking about York. So let's have a look. So this was on their Facebook page. <clears throat> Take it sweet time to get ready. There we go. Okay, this image, I just absolutely love it. I mean, how gorgeous is that? Right. So it says plan a stay in our historic city and visit the shambles, one of the most well, one of the most well preserved medieval streets in Europe. So 
as you can see, the, the, you know, the, what is the point of Visit York? Let's face it, what they want people to do is visit York, funnily enough. So they want people to who don't know York, but maybe are looking for places to go to get a bit of inspiration to think, wow, you know, that, you know, it might be that they're interested in history. They like looking at medieval buildings. They like looking at, you know, they get like well-preserved areas around Britain, celebrating British heritage. Those are the kind of people that they're want, going to want to attract with a post like that. The post itself, you know, the image itself is gorgeous. And as you can see, you know, like they have like the bow buns, you know, like they have like, you know, like, I guess, you know, quite modern brands that are in amongst and tastefully put in amongst this, you know, like medieval street or medieval quarter, if you like. And what they've done is they've added in the link, which is great with Facebook because you can actually add in a link so that will take you to the visityork.org where you can learn about what the shambles um, is. And then they've um, credited... Um, the photographer as well and again if she had had maybe a Facebook page I'm assuming that she's a um professional photographer but if not fine um but if she was I would have tagged her in so that then she can obviously like reshare her stuff she can reshare that and you know it can I would even have tagged in possibly even like it might be local newspapers it might be local other like videographers that might have some cool I don't know like you know drone stuff showing um you know like the area there's loads of different things I guess that you could piggyback you could do to piggyback off the back of a post like this but I think the key here is that they had 16,000 engagements for a visit x that's massive, massive, massive engagement. Huge, huge, huge. And that had 329 comments and 1,000 reshares. That's huge. And that is because A, they captured our attention with the image, first of all. B, it's, um, it's you know, it's selling York and, you know, it, it's doing, I guess, what, you know, what is this Facebook post designed to do? What do you want me to do off the back of this post? Funnily enough, you want me to go onto your website and you want me to look up, you know, how to visit York and when to visit York and that kind of thing. Um, and it's designed to celebrate place. So if I'm any business in and around York and I've seen this post, you're damn right, I'll be sharing it. I would be sharing it on my Facebook page. I will be sharing it on my Instagram page and I'll be sharing it in my stories going, oh, I'm only down the road from this. This is one of the most incredible buildings or incredible areas, um, blah, blah, blah. And this, and you know, why? You know, that what's your favourite building within this area? Get your people talking if you see an image like this because you're just piggybacking off the back of amazing content that's been generated for you that you don't have to go out and find so make sure you're following your visits your you know destinations your local councils and also things like local photographers local videographers and um, anybody that take you know artists and things like that because they will be picking they will be finding this content for you you don't have to find it and then all you're doing is sharing it with your people who happen to be people who live in york or from york or love york and that's amazing. Or it might be that you're piggybacking off the tourist industry. You might be a hotel. Why wouldn't you want to share that even if you're not based there? So make sure that you're looking for this kind of content. And this kind of content can be found through, as I say, going on to the sectors um, and looking at the destination management organizations. We've got a whole load of case studies on there about these guys as well. So make sure you're going to follow them. But as you can see, people love it. So love York so much, especially Betty's Tea Rooms. I do love York. I have a happy break. It's a truly beautiful place. Love York. I can't wait to go back. The Shambles in York, one of the most well-preserved places in the UK. Thank you for sharing with us. People have just loved it. They love it. So just bear that in mind, guys, when you are planning content is that sometimes it's not about what you come up with. Sometimes it's about celebrating place and there's no better place to, you know, way of finding it than making sure that you're engaging with like your local destination management organizations as well. So going back to the national content then, so we have created this for you guys. Um, we've been talking about it the last couple of weeks. So we've done 2023 social media content inspiration calendar. And basically what that is, is a big giant calendar that's full of all the national days, weeks, months, campaigns um, that you can use to pop in your diary and then maybe do a bit of a brainstorm um, on which ones you would like to celebrate. So, you know, we've just said pancake day. Um, so it might be pancakes. It might be um, Mother's Day is coming up. You know, they're the very obvious ones that everybody knows. But actually, there's a whole load of ones that are maybe more random or might be just really specific to your business. You know, there's a National Pretzel Day, for example. Um, it might be, you know, that I don't know, you sell pretzels. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys the month coming up so that we can have a look and see if we can find any inspiration for, say, 
might be, let's look at the end of March. Because obviously we've got um, Mother's Day coming up, but you know, there's plenty of other ones coming up. So let's have a look at much further down March. Here you can see them all. Okay, oops, gone way too far there. Sorry, it's taken a second. Um, I think I saw National Family Safety Week, I think was one of the ones that I saw there. So it's just taken a wee second to sort itself out because it's a huge while. Um, and yeah, so National Family Safety Week, could that be something that you guys could tag into, I don't know, so shopping centres, could you bring your local fire brigade in to talk about, I don't know, safety with fire? Could you bring in your local police to talk about, I don't know, safety when you're out and about looking out for you know the kids and you know your and adults alike or vulnerable people could it be that you um are a gym and I don't know you do stuff on self-defense you might do top tips on social media about self-defense there's quite literally any there's a hundred different ways that you could do something like the, the family safety week um you then got, of course, World Aut Autism Accept Acceptance Week. I can't even speak today. Acceptance Week. And again, that's huge. If you are autism friendly, if you um, have a quiet hour in your shop or in your restaurant, or if you have, um, I don't know, a sensory room or anything to do with that, or, you know, or it's something that's important to you, why not use that as something to talk about and use it as a platform? Because we've already got the hashtags, you've already got the campaign. All you're doing is raising awareness using that campaign. You're helping more people with autism or people with children with autism as part of doing that. So it is a really, really good thing. And then you've just got, you know, National Skipping Day. Why not? Why couldn't you hold a skipping tournament? Why couldn't you get your, you know, the your, the people behind the till in your coffee shop out doing something silly in the in the garden or something like that? You know, it's little things like that that you can do for fun engagement. But that's my point. You've got your Super Bowls. You've got your World Bipolar Day. You've got your Wear a Hat Day. There's lots of things going on. And it's about us giving you inspiration to create content that works for you, that engages with your um, audience. And we help you guys do this. So we've got all the tools. We've got um, unlimited expert support. So on a Monday, you can learn how to use maybe. So you come on here and you learn how to, you know, how to do the things that I show you on a weekly basis. We've got social media basics. We've got um, on a Wednesday, the best weekly post, which is me. Um, ads for beginners, advanced ads. And then of course, we've got all the on-demand training, which is why, as I say, my voice is always worse on here because I'm constantly uh, creating new video content for you guys. Um, we've got loads of expert support for you guys. You can chat to us live um, and we'll help you in any way we can. And then of course, we can do everything from scheduling to advertising to reporting and learning from your comp competition. So key takeaways for me are understand your audience when looking at the best ways of engaging with them. So think back to in the style. They know that, you know, it's about hitting people in the funnies or hitting people in the feels. They know that people like like a little meme. They know that people like, you know, like those little kind of Instagram posts or little gifts and things. So it's about um, hitting people where they are and doing something that is going to drive them to do a thing, like engage. So understand your audience. Um, get your team out from behind the counter and show them off, you know, put them in front of the shop window, talk about, you know, get them in, in front of the camera, get them talking face to camera about what they've been up to that day. People buy from people and it's so important. So think like the butchers did that had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of um, bits of engagement. And that's just because they went, hi, this is Gary and this is Clark. That's as simple as it needs to be. Um. If you're going to get involved in a national campaign, make sure it's something that will actually resonate with your audience. So think, Greg's. So whilst clearly some people just didn't like the Super Bowl and weren't impressed with the British brand focusing on it, everyone else was arguing with them. Everyone else was was talking about it, and everyone else did a bit of a joke about you know as British people and you know thinking it's just a you know it's a funny rugby and that kind of thing. It's just about meeting people where they are and using national content. So like the ones that I just showed you, using national content as a bit of a as a bit of a way of you know like chatting to people that's what that was all about your local police management organization will have tons of amazing content so make sure you embrace this content and use it to celebrate your place because people love it not everything is about you not everything is about your product or your service sometimes it is about just either providing value or providing a bit of nostalgia or you know if you want people to engage with you and ultimately spend money with you or do the thing you need them to do 
the best way to do that is create engagement. The best way of doing that is actually sometimes pride of place. And then just set up your maybe account and get started. You know, that's what we're all about here. Sign in today um, and you can start learning from all of the other brands.